Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome again to another painting tutorial. So today I decided to paint a still life painting. And you know, um, it's also one of my favorite uh, way of painting still life because it's really focused on the subject. And when we say focus, we give attention to details, you know, as much as possible. And even if you want impressionistic paintings, you should still, you know, somehow show some details that may not be um, like strict, strictly following the details of the real object, but you should always make sure that the colors are there, the natural colors are there. So I really like still life painting because it makes me focus on one subject, and it does not distract me um, given, I mean, let's say landscapes. There are a lot of objects in landscapes that you have to focus on. But sometimes, you know, I do love, love uh, landscapes. In fact, I love landscapes in general. So I'm going to sketch first the subject. As you can see here, my canvas paper is already, is already painted black. So just get your... Black canvases, if you already have those um, ready-to-use ones. But I had to paint my canvas paper black. So while waiting, I had to do something else. So it's now dry, completely dry. I can definitely paint over it. And now all I have to do is to sketch the subject on this black canvas paper. My canvas paper size is 11 by 14 inches. You don't have to get the exact canvas paper. You know, that's why... I really don't mention a lot of details in my painting tutorials. I mentioned the colors, but not the paintbrush, the, the size of the canvas. Not that they are not important, but I think it is important for you to know how to paint, not to copy my painting. You know what I mean? Like I'm teaching how to paint. I'm not teaching you to copy the painting. I hope that makes sense, guys. So I'm going to sketch first the subject and I'll be using white so that you can see it against the canvas. Right. I know some people do not agree with what I said, but I said what I had to say. I know that you some will mention that uh, because when I mention the size um, or when I give importance to uh, letting you know the size of the canvas that I'm using, it means that your learning proportion. Well, actually, um, it's not really learning proportion because uh, just because I didn't mention it does not mean you cannot learn um, proportion when it comes to learning from my tutorials. The way I'm looking at it, you can actually learn how to proportion your own painting just by looking at this. All right? So I'm not teaching you to just copy my work. I'm teaching you how to paint. That's it. That's why I really appreciate those who can actually paint. Those who can actually follow my instructions just by watching my tutorials. I really appreciate those people. And then they show me their versions of their work. Um, because uh, as I mentioned in one of my Facebook posts, that it reflects, you know, somehow on the way I relay instructions. And they didn't have to know the size of my canvas, in all honesty, for sure. By the way, these are pears, okay? I love painting pears because um, they're very, they have markings that are very natural looking. I kind of like it. So this is not an apple. This is not guava. These are pears. I just love it. And we'll do our best to make it as realistic as possible. Maybe I'm going to make this pear a little bigger because um, kind of balance things. All right. Just like that. All right. And now for the underpainting, okay, we'll be using some green and brown. Meaning, I'll be muting down the green color. I don't have the green as of the moment, but I have phthalo blue. 
So I'm just going to mix that with cadmium yellow. I don't know if I mentioned the colors that I'll be using. I think I forgot. <laughs> so I'll be using um, phthalo blue. Anyway, this will be lit. This will be listed in the description box below. Phthalo blue and cadmium yellow. Burnt, uh, burnt sienna or brown red. And titanium white. I'm sorry guys, I forgot. But then you know me. I always write the colors in the description box below. So this will be the underpainting. I'll be mixing my green with some brown red or burnt sienna if you do have it. Okay. I'll be getting my yellow as so. well. And I'll be underpainting the pear with this color. Okay, I'm sorry guys. I think I'll be using as well my um, yellow ochre. So I'll be getting my yellow ochre because um, yellow ochre is more on the brown side of things. Yeah. You want it to be more browny yellow, not, not really. Yeah, that's, this is the color that I want. But I'll be adding dark colors since we are doing the underpainting. Okay. I will definitely paint over the sketch lines, but maybe not just yet. Okay, I'll be getting my brown again. Since this is the underpainting, we're not really strict about how green the color is. As long as the green, oh, sorry, as long as the green is more dark, we'll be lightening it later. I'm just combining the green and the browns. And I'm just so excited to finish this one because... I love pears, and um, one of my first tutorials uh, back in 2020 was uh, a still life composed of fruits in a plate. So, yeah, I just remembered. Okay, again, more, okay, more of that color, like browny, greeny, yellowy color. Okay, I'll be adding more yellow ochre this area. So the light will be coming from the right side. As you can see here, I'm not completely removing the sketch lines, but, you know, I think I can with, the, with this one. With the right, with the pair on the right side, I will paint over the sketch lines so that we don't see that anymore. Okay. All right. And now let's proceed to doing some um, second layer of underpainting. So I'm going to use the same color right here. I'll be getting my yellow ochre. Okay, I'll be kind of dry brushing. I can't, I will dry, you know what? Guys, it's so hard to speak. I don't know why, I'm, I think I'm uh, quite sleepy. So I'll be adding a little bit of yellow ochre this side. Okay, and also this side. What's, what's wrong with my... Speaking. 
so it's holiday today so i'm enjoying every bits of it i'll be getting my white okay it's actually not pure white anymore since we have other colors present and i'll be brushing along this area so we're highlighting a bit but not really we're just identifying where the light is gonna go or where the light will be present okay i need my black um i don't think i ever painted without using my black and white they're just indispensable you know i'll be graying that down so i'm just adding some black i'm gonna gray it down okay i'll be getting my black even more and i'll be applying it just beside this pair okay it's not dark as dark as i want it to be okay let me use my hand Right. Again, some black paint. Oops, sorry. You see, my control is not that very good today. I don't know what's wrong with me today. In all honesty, um... I was awake at 2 o'clock in the morning. I was awake. I was just lying on my bed. I don't know why. But I wasn't sleepy at all. I wasn't forcing myself to sleep. Okay. All right, just like that. And I'll be darkening again this area this is to give our pair some dimension okay. all right just like that i'll be getting my brown Let's make this area more brown. And if you notice, I'm not really washing my brush. Okay, again, a little bit of black. Maybe add more green. Not, not too much black because the light is coming from the right side. So this should not be too dark. All right, great. Okay, again, just use a little bit of gray color and let's gray this area. I'm going to soften it by using my fingers in applying the colors. Right, just like that. Here. And just like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also right here. Okay, I'll be getting my 
yellow ochre plus green All right, just like that. Again, yellow ochre. I'll be adding a little bit of white to my yellow ochre so that it becomes more neutral. And I'll be adding a little bit of water just to make the application smoother. So you can see now I'm already painting over the, the sketch lines. Okay. And the same thing here. I just dry brush. Here, yellow ochre. Again, remove already the sketch lines. We don't need that anymore. Okay, it's like that. Now I'll be getting my white, but make sure you remove the excess water from your paintbrush. I'll be adding a little bit of black so that it's not, you know, super white. Kind of want to make sure that we're not yet highlighting. We're just um, putting some markings, you know. And we want to soften it a bit. A little bit of shape adjustment over here. And also a little bit of that highlighted portion. Okay. Just like that. And some more white. Okay, you want to soften the whiteness. Okay, now I'm going to apply a little bit of yellow green. So I'm just mixing my yellow ochre plus the green color that I do have here. I'll be adding some cad yellow. Okay. 
and I'll be applying that right here. Mm -hmm. That's too much yellow. I actually need green color. Okay, I'll be adding some light, light yellowy colors. Okay, light yellow, not green. So I'll be mixing my yellow and white. Okay, just like that. And of course, you know me, I'll use my hands. Okay, I'll be using another brush just to make things smoother. So I'm using another brush that is not wet at all. I'll be getting a white and again you don't want to use too much white you just want to make sure that the white color is there to highlight this one okay now let's use a cleaner brush let's get some pure white Let's make some dry brushing application right here. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm just dry brushing. Dry brushing is when you use paints without using too much water, at least the amount of water that you normally use. All right. Now I'll be using a more pointy brush, okay, a small brush. And the purpose of this is to just apply some tiny dots. Okay. Where's my pointy brush? Right. There you go. So I'm going to use my brown red. Mix with a little bit of black. And I'm going to go and make some dots. So do not make your markings appear super like it has a pattern it should not have any particular pattern okay just like that Okay, and while we're at it, I'm just going to make some details on this handle. Okay, I'm going to use some watered-down black just to darken this side. Right. Oh. 
also here. Okay, very preliminary actually. All right, now that we're at it, I might as well outline this area. Then bargain. All right, now let's proceed. We will go back to this. Or maybe I'm just going to use my cadmium yellow because I want to see the dimension. I'll be using my cad yellow. And slightly glaze this with that color. But then we want to thin the color down. We don't want to use super bright yellow here. We only want to use a tiny amount of that yellow. That's why I'm using water. To somehow thin down the color. We just want to see markings of yellow. We don't want to see a yellow, super flat looking pair. Like that I'll be using some of this yellow over here it's just glazing some areas mm -hmm. all right okay I'll be getting my brown just like what we did um with the markings but maybe this time I'll be using a little bit of yellow colors just to add um, naturalism okay. A little bit of dark colors. Okay. Again, some markings. Right. You can you you can do any markings you know and that you want as long as they look natural. Some brown, brownie colors. All right, I'm going to water down some of my browns so that this brown effect um, looks more natural okay because when we just put some markings you know um, when this watered down brown dries out okay it will create that watercolor effect okay that I kind of like all 
All right, we're going to wait for that to dry, okay? Now I'm going to get some light brown. So I'll be mixing my brown with white. But, okay, it's not really pure light brown because of the presence of other colors, okay? I'll be adding some details on the bark, or oh, no, the handle. So I'm just alternately using some browns, black and light browns on this area. Okay, also right here. Okay, I'll be getting my gray. Actually, it's not really gray. It's like light brown. But we actually need gray. So I'm going to get... It appears more brown than gray. But it's okay. All right, and I'm going to bring this down again. And some markings. We're just creating markings, really. We're not really painting, painting, but um, these are just markings. Right. More white. And of course, some of the yellowy colors. Again, we want to create markings. We don't want to smudge anything here. We want to retain the natural markings because that makes all the difference. Okay, let me see on camera. It's not complete, all right, because we will be doing some reflections later. It's not really done, and we all know that. I'm just going to get my black because I want to clean this area. All right. Now, okay, I'll be sketching the reflection before we proceed to detailing even more the pairs. We can clean. We can clean and allow it to dry. Okay, it's not yet done. Now we're going to do a little bit of reflections. So we'll be using the same color, only that it will be dark. So for the reflection of the first pair, I'll be getting again some green, 
but it'll feel it'll be dark to appear more dark okay just like this Okay. Okay, great. And you don't want to um, paint this too close to the to the pair. You just you want a little bit of space between the reflection and the thing that is being reflected. Right. I'm going to get my white, but then again, you want to tone that, tone that white down, you add black. Okay, okay. this is too dark, uh, too white, actually. <sighs> Maybe this is good. Right, just like this. Okay, just like that. And you want to uh, kind of uh, want to allow that to dry. I'm going to get my brighter green color. This will be for this reflection since this is way brighter. Okay, that's too yellow. Again, you just want to be close, but not too close. Okay, so that will be for this pair. We want to apply a little bit of naturalism on the reflection area. I'll be adding a little bit of hint of green right there, but we will be darkening it, okay? So now let's get some black. So I'll be darkening it using some watered down black. You know, this is what I like about still life. A lot of techniques, really. It's not just painting a good old landscape. It's about technique. And for me, painting is not just an expression, all right? Painting is also learning. It's a skill. Some people think that painting is just merely for expression. Um, like you express your feelings through painting. Um, for me, painting is not just an expression. It is more of... Um, more on the academic side as well. So you just you just don't express because in all honesty, I can express my feelings in words. I don't need a painting to express how I feel. Of course, that would be great. I mean, sometimes I do, but um, since it's so easy for me to express my feelings in words, in writing, I don't need a painting to do the job for me when it comes to expressing my feelings. I can say it to someone's face, if that makes sense. Okay, let me just darken this area. So yeah, as I was saying, still life painting is an application of skills as well. It's not just about just painting it. It's learning to see, it's learning to appreciate light and 
darkness. So I'll be using some watered down black. I'll be darkening this side to create more dimension. Right here. And again, separate the reflection from the thing that is being reflected by darkening it, okay? By outlining that space between the two, just like that. I like this one. I'll be adding a hint of green right there but not too much okay not too much you just want to have that hint of green somewhere in there okay and using some white I'll be highlighting it. Okay. All right, just like that. You know, I'm going to add more detailing on the pair. I'll be getting my brown. Add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of black. I want to make sure that I still add some markings even here on the dark areas of our pair. Again, we, we want to make sure that it's there. We don't want to create specific patterns. We just want to make sure that there are dots, there are markings. I want to use some black. All right, just like that. Okay, some yellowy color. We want to do a little bit of highlighting. And also here. Okay, and some watered down white. This time we'll be using some watered down white to highlight. 
the front of the pair. Again, we just want to use dab, dabs and the markings. We don't want to use smudging or the usual brush strokes. And we also want to highlight this side. Just apply white paint along this side. Okay. White markings. Mm -hmm. That's too much, I guess. Here. Let me check. Okay, I think I really applied too much on this area. So I'm going to remove that. I'm just going to use a super wet brush and I'm going to scrape the white paint. Or maybe spread it uh, on some areas. Okay. You can scrape that off. And I'm just going to get my black again. Just to make sure that it's dark. Let me check. Yeah, correct. But I don't want this to appear rotten, so I'm going to get my yellow. Okay, that's a lot of white. When you're not washing your brush, this is what you get. <laughs> Great. Okay, just like that. And hello noise again. Is that even a police car? I'm not sure if it's just an ordinary car or a fire car, a fire, fire truck or something. I'm going to get my brown. Again, we want to make sure that we do a little bit of markings. This markings will make it appear more really natural
Okay. And we want to make sure as well that there is some sort of brown color appearing down here. They should not be that detailed anymore since they are mere reflections and reflections are sometimes, especially uh, water reflections, they are distorted versions. And especially if the glass is not that um, like mirror-like, if it's just an, a transparent or translucent glass, the reflections are more dark. So the details are not really showing. Okay, just a little bit of markings on the right side of this pair because even if it's bright appearing, um, there should be still markings there. All right, let me check. Okay. I'll be glazing this with white because I need some brightness to the painting. I'll be getting my black, add more depth and dimension. And then some white. Okay. I'm just waiting for this to dry, but I'll be glazing this. So I'm just whitening this area. Just for highlights. I'm just carefully highlighting the left side. Oh, sorry, the right side. Right. I'm just carefully highlighting it okay, with some white. But again, we want to make sure that the brown, that the brown markings are still there. We want to make sure that even if we glaze it with lots and lots of white, you know, for highlighting purposes, we want to make sure that the markings, the natural markings are still there. Okay, using black, I just want to re-emphasize the separation between the thing that is being reflected and the reflection. I'm just going to clean this up. Okay. 
And again, I'm sort of green. And also brown. Just to, yeah, like that. Okay, I really, really like this one. Okay. I think this is dry, but not really. So I'm going to dry brush now. I'm going to do some sort of dry brushing. And I'll be using my really, really old brush. As you can see, it's super old, but the bristles are super thick and dry okay so i'll be getting my white and i'll be adding tiny bit of black just to gray things down again we don't want to use pure white okay and i'm just gonna use this take advantage of the dry bristles to just go over my hair okay I'm just going to go over and since I'm using an old brush, I kind of like the effect that it's creating. I'm going to create some highlights. Again, I suggest that you use an old, really old brush. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of yellow. I want to make sure that my pear is still yellow. So I'm going to spread some yellowy colors here and there. So a little bit of yellow here and there. Oh, why are they so noisy today? Huh? I'll be mixing my yellow and brown just to create some sort of almost orange color right here to give it another shade of yellow. Again, we want to make sure that this looks natural. We don't want it to look flat and with all the effort that we exerted for this one. Okay. Now I'll be using a more pointy brush. I want to get my white just to highlight, highlight things a bit. Okay, like that. Check. Oh, I really like this one. Oh my gosh. Right, great, great. Almost done. Now we wanna we wanna blur. Okay, we wanna blur this. So I'm gonna use some gray. And I'm gonna blur okay, this area. 
Oops, that's too much. Too much blurring. I'm just applying gray color. Okay, and some more browns. Just add more browns. Also adding some markings. And I'm going to clean because I see that some paints went outside the line. This is the time for me to clean it. I really like this one. Wow. It's nice. It's been a while since the last time I did something like this. And I like it. I like it very, very, very much. I'll be spreading a little bit of yellowy color. Mm -hmm. Straight noise here and there. Amazing. And my tummy is growling. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but I just did. And I'm going to apply a little bit of greeny colors. You know, just to make sure that again, our pair looks natural okay i absolutely love this one okay yeah i really like this one and now i'm gonna sign this because i absolutely love it <laughs> I'm going to sign this. I'll be using my white and I'll be signing right here. Okay. Okay. So I hope you enjoy that one and I hope you paint along with me. If you like this video, let me know in the comment section below. And you can send me your versions of any tutorials that you've done um, following my videos. And yeah, so see you in my next one, guys. And have a lovely day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs>